and say hi just so that uh, um, okay so matthew uh, i had put on the chat that you know we will talk about uh, roi and how to increase or improve roi on s4 after you've gone live with s4 so i know that you are live with s4 right so did you have any particular question or thought in mind that you wanted to discuss or that you wanted to bounce around with me yeah yes mangesh i think you know in fact you know as you know that we are in the process of implementing s4 brim and cx Uh, the the and and just handling by different uh, partners as well. So mm -hmm. one of the challenge what we are facing is that you know uh, the standards versus uh, you know the change request or the rising part. So that's actually mm -hmm. we uh, from a management point of view we want to go with the uh, uh, standards. Mm -hmm. So how SAP can uh, you know I mean uh, uh, make us you know or 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 give some sort of high level point of view like you know okay fine this is the standard this is suit for this particular line of business uh, that's something actually we are looking for. Okay, so see there are uh, uh, there is very clear recommendation from SAP right that you have to look at standard uh, the ERP the core to be uh, kept uh, as far as possible standard and everything else that you need uh, need to be developed as extensions. Using SAP yeah. Business Technology Platform. Now, one of the questions that a lot of customers have is, you know, how do I know whether a particular functionality that I want uh, is already available in standard, or whether or not, uh, uh, you know, if it is not, then whether when is it uh, going to be available? And uh, yeah. also, you know, so that you can decide whether you want to build an extension or not. Exactly. Right. So there is one. Place where you can actually look at um, uh, when it comes to at least S4 uh, from from that point of view. Um, every S4 release has a 340 page document, a PPT okay. uh, that okay. uh, uh, SAP releases uh, along with every S4 release that SAP do does, which has a list of all functionalities that is available as part of S4 in that release. Okay. Okay. So uh, you can actually find that in multiple places. Maybe I can share the link uh, uh, here as well. And we we also try and make sure that you know, as part of the S four and I special interest group, we actually bring in and share uh, all the new functionalities that have been developed from uh, in that release and and has been released in that particular release. So okay. another format, another place where you can actually check whether or not a particular functionality is available. Is uh, if you actually go to uh, the uh, transformation navigator uh, and uh, you run the service uh, that SAP offers for free, so one of that's something that um, uh, I recommend that every customer should do every six to nine months, uh, or maybe you know every year as a cadence. You know, let's say every January or every March or every April, whenever you have some lean time, you should actually run the business uh, BSR report. Okay, so it's a very simple process to do, and once you do that process, what it does is it tells you what are what's your existing consumption of functionality within your SAP system, and what are the new functionalities that SAP has released in in the the releases beyond where you are right now, which could okay. potentially be used for what you are doing or which could be potentially relevant. So every year, so that takes care of the. Part where you know you find out what uh, what has been released new, which you can then move to standard. For example, you developed something uh, custom, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, let's say six months down, one year down, two year down, uh, SAP released a standard. So now you know. Okay, so from custom, uh, you can actually move to standard. So that's something that you should do every year or so, uh, just so that uh, you keep your core clean. So, what is going to come up in terms of uh, new functionality that SAP is working on is something that you can find on Roadmaps uh, website. I do not know how many of you have seen this, but let me just share my screen. Uh, there is this site uh, which you should always uh, check out uh, whenever uh, uh, you are looking for new functionality. So, let me know if you are able to see my screen. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm able to see your screen. Okay. Uh, meanwhile, uh, thanks everyone for joining in. 
Um, so we're just uh, talking about um, the question of you know standard versus uh, custom build when you are going live with uh, S4 for the first time. So this site, right, roadmaps.sap.com, uh, I will put this on the chat so that uh, you have the link. So this is the place where you can actually find out what is being built. So you can actually do it from, look at it from multiple different frames. So let's say products. So if you look at from, from a products frame, you can look at, you know, okay, ERP and finance, what is new, which is being developed. So let's, for example, let's take uh, supply chain logistics. Okay, so if I look at supply chain logistics, it tells me, okay, so, for example, in Q1 of 2022, which is this March, uh, there are these are the different topics that are being developed. So if I want to know more information about each one of these, let's say, for example, I want to know ability to use new product hierarchy and characteristics of catalogs. If I click on that, it brings me up here. It gives me a little more details with an image that you can actually look at and all of that. So this is this tells you also that this is in the available advanced available to AT, uh, advanced ATP uh, functionality of uh, the uh, system. It also tells you what the features are, gives you a technical view in terms of you know, where this is going to be. It gives you a capability view in terms of you know what capabilities are coming up, and it also tells you which business roles will this impact. Okay. Right. So, for example, if you want to look at uh, a particular topic, you don't uh, have a product, but let's say, for example, you want to look at uh, uh, treasury. So, if I just type treasury, it will tell me all across all products, across all industries, across all things, what is being developed from a treasury and which solution it is. So, for example, this one uh, is relevant to treasury, but it is available, it is going to be available in S4 on a cloud 20. 202. Okay. So same way in Q3, there is nothing in Q2 coming from a treasury perspective. The next one is Q3 2022, seven new functionalities which are being built. Q4 2022, there are four new functionalities that are being built and things like that. So you can continue to go um, uh, four rolling quarters from that point of view. And of course, uh, if you want to look at existing functionality of uh, any given solution, you can always go to help.sap.com. And from there, you can actually uh, look at uh, whatever solutions you want to look at. So for example, if you are looking at search by products, so I can pick any product, let's say I'll pick, yeah, I'll pick uh, enterprise um, uh, ERP. S for HANA. So let's say, for example, I'll take a space for HANA. And here uh, it gives me a feature scope description, right? And then okay. there is a documentation. So uh, this will tell you whether or not the functionality that uh, you're looking for is already existing in S4 or not. No. Okay. I know it's a little long uh, to search. Uh, I would probably start from this document. This tells you what are the feature scopes. I told you that there, there is a 300 page document, right? So if you look at it, this okay. is a, almost, a, 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 you know, a, a, typically 700 pages long. And all you need to do is just come here and control F. And let's say, for example, you are looking for a particular functionality, you just search, and it will tell you whether or not that fun functionality is available as part of standard or not. You search here. If you don't find it here, you go to the roadmap, check whether or not that functionality is being developed in the next two or three quarters. If it is not developed or if it is not there in the roadmap, then and only then do you actually go and look at uh, developing a custom uh, application using business technology platform and nothing else. And you can actually do a extension uh, either using um, BTP or any other uh, technology from that point of view. So that would be my suggestion in terms of you know how you proceed uh, from where you are when you are looking to explore whether or not a particular functionality exists and if yes, uh, where to find it. Uh, if no, uh, 
uh, when if it is going to be available, if it is not going to be available, then go and build it. Uh, I know that the partner ecosystem is pretty. Uh, it's easier uh, to build something uh, from scratch rather than you know spending time in searching all of these places. But uh, in the long run, it's cheaper, easier to maintain, and faster to upgrade if you do this work upfront rather than take the easy path of uh, developing a custom application every time uh, you come across a functionality that is not something which is standard. Thank you, Mikesh. This is really informative. And you know, you're talking about the transformation navigator right now. Is that yeah. uh, how, how, you will, how will I may I able to access that? Is from uh, SAP or from uh, any website? However, so SAP only will uh, actually, if you just go to, uh, if you Google SAP transformation navigator, okay. so it will take you to a, a, a play page uh, on SAP support. And from there you can actually, you know, you have everything, you know, you can launch the uh, transformation navigator. Uh, you can create your own landscape, blah, 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 uh, and all of that. So you can do that. And then the other thing that I spoke about was the BSR um, uh, report. So that's another thing that uh, we should actually look at. Okay. Thank you, Mukesh. I'll put these two on the chat as well. Yeah. So these two, every year you should do this once. Uh, every time you are looking to uh, add new solutions or uh, create uh, uh, changes to your IT infrastructure from an SAP point of view. It's a good practice to uh, run both of these uh, at, uh, at some point in time. Thank you, Mukesh. No problem at all, sir. I hope it was uh, helpful, useful. Hi, Bhaskar. Um, hi, Srini. Uh, Srinivas, uh, thanks for joining in. Uh, yeah, did you yeah, have any? very useful, yeah. <laughs> You've been in this conversation, yeah. Super. So did you have any questions, thoughts, comments that you wanted to uh, discuss today? So the conversation was around um, S4 and how do you overall improve your ROI uh, from your S4 migration, right? So did you have any questions, thoughts, comments? Are you live on S4? If you can just tell me uh, that point. Yeah, so let me go first. Uh, this is Srinivas Bandi. Okay. Uh, as you are aware, I, I am from a system integrator uh, point of view, right? So uh, I do conduct uh, uh, what we call it as a broader assessments. Uh, again, uh, SAP documents are uh, the baseline. SAP insights are taken as a perspective. <clears throat> but again, there is always what is called as how do you translate that into the customer language and uh, uh, probably we'll also do a bit of deep dive into what are those lines of business activity, what is that is appropriate for them, is there a possibility that they can look at uh, what we call it as uh, a, a continuous innovation kind of a process, uh, small chunks of bytes wherein they, what they can do. Similarly, uh, making the customer prepare Okay, when it comes to conversion, making the customer to prepare is very, very important. Many a time, uh, it's easier for them to say that, uh, A, our systems are good enough, we are ready. B, our systems are not good enough, forget about it, and we, we would like to start, okay, on a, on a <clears throat> uh, new slate, and uh, it would be green field. Third is that uh, it's a in between, they are not able to really elicit what they really want. However, there is a need that is perceived, felt, et cetera. That's where we may have to help the CAOs and the, the technical people in terms of how the transition ha should happen. So in the process, we also uh, leverage all these uh, reports, et cetera, as you rightly said. And uh, majority of the times, uh, it also leads into three factors. A, basically, what is the right product? For example, there is always a discussion that is going to happen on the HCM front. Okay, should I stay with or should I go for success factors or should I look at something outside of SAP? That's, that's okay. That's a question typically we, we, we get. 
the second thing is that uh, with regard to how do i adopt uh, the hybrid cloud okay so as you rightly said keep the core clean everybody's effort is to ensure keep the core clean but we should also listen to the business voice and uh, how do we take it appropriately that and that's where probably a group reporting related one or a credit card integration or certain cloud solutions that sap provides so that we don't uh, get back to what is called as building from the scratch and all that so that's number 2 and the third most important thing is that uh, uh, data how do we address that data and the fourth most important thing uh, is very very importantly what we call it as how the objects my objects which have been built over a period of 10 15 years how do they reflect and what should i ideally do and finally um, what is the okay uh, okay because the topic itself says as for hana how do we ensure the value enhancement etc so we also use value life cycle manager okay along uh, um, and i'll also walk through the account executive and uh, there is a rice program also which which focuses on value life cycle manager and how do we bring in the value map it and uh, how that gets translated over a period of time so that is where uh, uh, is always uh, what is called as more interactions happen so that's my experience probably slightly different from what others but uh, that's what i typically do uh, yeah thanks thanks uh, uh, shrinivas for sharing uh, your insights with us as well so um uh, i uh, i see abhay uh, joining in as well hi abhay baskar uh, ankur abhay if you if you have any topics questions thoughts around our increasing roi of your s4 i think so specific i think uh, matthew has helped me a lot in asking similar questions so that answered a lot of questions dsr is uh, one thing that is new to us okay so I'll try to uh, run those reports and check. So, so I'm I'm sharing some links as well. So you can BSR has actually gone uh, gone through a couple of iterations of updates as well. So uh, you can actually read through the uh, blog uh, blog link that I have shared. That should give you uh, a lot of information about what uh, uh, its current form uh, looks like. So it's called the process discovery now uh, after SAP acquired. Uh, the entire uh, 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 process uh, business process uh, uh, company um, uh, i'm forgetting the name of the company now uh, s so what was the name of the company signalio 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 yeah so uh, they've kind of uh, integrated the uh, business bsr with signavio uh, and now renamed it process discovery so you can find the link on the chat using which you can actually explore and uh, you showed us uh, one document right 100 page document can you yeah. send that link also right sure okay. i will do i will okay. upload i will put the link as well so you can actually find that from the sap uh, support in any case but i will put the link here yeah Uh, hi abhay uh, did you have any uh, uh, thoughts comments that uh, or to uh, bring to the conversation so i was talking to uh, while we wait uh, i mean at any point in time if you have a question thought comment uh, just put it on the chat and we can take it from there but one of the Uh, i was talking to a customer uh, in uh, in malaysia and uh, uh, the customer asked me you know um, why should someone actually if i am happy with my ecc instance on prem uh, do i really need to move what is the value for me to move to s4 in that case that made me think about you know how do you show or how do you find um, Or how do you mine value from this entire journey, from an S4 perspective, right? So uh, that was running in my mind, and I ended up uh, over the weekend reading a book called um, "How Buildings Learn." 
so this is a book by uh, stewart brand it's an old classic architecture book uh, when i say architecture i mean civil architecture buildings real life buildings and all of that and in the book uh, he talks about uh, every building he says that you know there are layers in the building and uh, the building learns uh, over a period of time and changes and adapts uh, to the people who are living inside the building and what i felt was that there was a lot of parallels between what he was talking about and what uh, we as uh, uh, people who put together an it architecture um, for a business uh, do as well so i kind of liked the parallels so maybe i'll take a 5 or 10 minutes uh, to share uh, what i learned from that book and what the parallels that i thought uh, were interesting and maybe uh, if if there is a question thought or comment we can uh, we can discuss debate that so stewart talks about the fact that there are there are six layers for any uh, architecture uh, buildings architecture right uh, and he says he contends that each layer changes at a different pace and each layer adds a different kind of value uh, to the building so let's say for example the first layer is the site of the building you know, where the building is actually constructed so if you actually look at uh, uh, the it parallel uh, this is this is your on prem uh, versus cloud kind of a place which is where you are actually building your entire it architecture right so just like for example if you take a plot of land and that becomes your site uh is very similar to having your own set of servers and running your entire it from those servers so that's the parallel that i would think when it comes to uh, the physical site for a building versus uh, uh the uh, physical site for all the it applications now this could also be uh, you know on a hyperscaler or on the, on the cloud private cloud or public cloud but it has to be a physical space from where you build the entire um, infrastructure or the it architecture uh, the way or where the site is and who owns the site has a significant uh, impact on multiple things going forward in the long term so for example if you already if you own the site then uh, it's easier for you to uh, do whatever you want to do with the site Uh, and change whenever you want to change to whatever you want to change and may request others who are not speaking go on mute please we are hearing a lot of noise from abai so i have just uh, muted him as well yeah thanks mukesh sorry for that no problem so that's the site if you actually think about it uh, if you are building it building a, a plot uh, right, uh, right from a plot of land the entire building then the entire process is very different versus you take uh, an existing uh, building which is owned and operated by someone else and you kind of you know create an architecture within the confines of that building right so that's the first uh, layer uh, that uh, stewart talks about the second the second layer that he talks about is the structure which is uh, uh, the foundation uh for the building and uh, the uh, structure in hindi they call it dhancha right so uh, the walls uh, that come up along with the foundation and that i think in parallel i can parallel that with uh, your core business application which is typically an erp system right it doesn't matter whether it is ecc s4 or a third party uh, erp uh, application or whether it is business one or Uh, business by design or any other erp for that matter because that then uh, is your core uh, application and that is the core for your building right and you need to be uh, very uh, conscious of how you put the core uh, that's the reason why you know uh, just like uh, architects have blueprints before they even start digging Uh, and they keep in mind how people will move how people will interact with the building how uh, you know the air needs to flow what kind of uh, uh, interactions are needed and all of that exactly the same way uh, typically before you implement a 
ERP solution, uh, you actually look at a blueprint and create a blueprint in terms of you know how the processes are going to run, how, are, um, how each department is going to interact with each other and all of that, right? So you take care of how people will use this system and interact with this system, just like architects take in mind how people will interact with their buildings. So that's the second layer, if I may say so. Um, uh, it can be built on whatever, you know, it, it doesn't matter whether it is uh, you are uh, uh, building it up on your piece of land or you are actually, you know, putting it together uh, in a, a rented or a, um, uh, third party um, uh, area, so which is the site. The third layer that Stuart talks about is the skin. What he means by skin is the paint. Uh, uh, it means uh, the materials that needs to go in uh, in terms of uh, uh, the block, uh, the bricks, uh, and then the paints and your uh, uh, water resistant chemicals, your rain resistant uh, uh, chemicals, everything that needs to go in to ensure that uh, uh, the walls are not just uh, sturdy, but they are also long lasting and they are also uh, fulfilling what they are looking to do. Now, uh, the parallel for me here is uh, in addition to uh, uh, your core ERP being deployed, uh, there are uh, multiple uh, things that uh, we need to uh, understand from a, just give me a second, please. Yeah. So uh, these are uh, your uh, surround application, right? So for example, your HR, uh, your um, success factors, your, um, you know, localization aspect of it, everything uh, uh, that makes uh, the roof uh, so that, you know, um, everything that makes your ERP complete when it comes to your business requirements and your legal requirements. So that's the third layer. Now, the fourth layer that he talks about is the services layer, which is, uh, you know, the working guts of your uh, building, which is your heating, your air conditioning, your plumbing, your electrical lines, your, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 sewage, all of that. Now, all of that, I think, is akin to uh, integration between every element or every piece of software that you have put in. Uh, uh, it also means uh, having the right master data uh, structure so that the data can flow, uh, can flow from one application to the other without, have, without any issues and having clearly defined workflows. So integration between applications and having clearly defined workflows. So that's, I think, similar to uh, uh, the services layer that uh, he talks about in a building. Uh, then comes uh, the next layer that he talks about is a space plan, which is, you know, uh, ceiling uh, layout in terms of, you know, where is the kitchen, where is the, uh, uh, you know, how do you move through uh, one place to the other, where is the lift uh, put, put up, and all of that, right? So while these are still uh, uh, significant uh, uh, installations, where is the gas stove, for example, uh, where is your mains and all of that. So this I think is in a way, again, I'm just trying to find a parallel, which is the ability for your business to, um, uh, to be able to create um, uh, data that can be analyzed, right? So, which, so that's the layer, if you actually ask me. So, which seems similar to the space plan. And finally, the last layer that he talks about is stuff, which is, uh, I think, is very uh, relatable to your standard reports. Stuff, when I say stuff is your chair, where is the chair placed? Where is the desk placed? Um, uh, where is your... Uh, uh, you know, um, uh, pictures uh, wall on hanging on the wall, uh, and uh, where is your TV uh, placed, and all of that. So, if you actually look at it uh, on the reverse side, it's very very easy for you to change stuff, right? So, for example, you can easily put together a new report. You can easily put together uh, just like you can move chairs 
uh, or tables uh, as easily as possible. You don't need much uh, effort or much uh, uh, planning uh, in order to move things around in the stuff around in your home or in a building. Similarly, I have a feeling that I, I believe that you know all these reports and all these uh, uh, standard reports that we talk about uh, in any given organization, those can be um, uh, changed and uh, moved around, uh, newly created. Uh, you know, you can you can uh, discard a particular report, bring in a new report. Uh, you can use uh, uh, technologies which enable you to all of that as well. So that's the layer, uh, uh, and that's the layer that is most visible. If you see what I mean, in a building, uh, when someone walks in. That's the first thing that they see. And that creates a big impression when it comes to uh, uh, how your building uh, looks like, right? And that's also the, the first interaction that anybody has with a building, and which is what uh, uh, also is uh, uh, happening with uh, your IT infrastructure or IT strategy as well, architecture as well, which is uh, your reports and your standard applications, the screens, that uh, end users see are the first level of interaction that they have. They are easy to change and uh, easy to move around. So mobile applications, for example, if you actually ask me, so you can actually create a new app, uh, deploy it really, uh, really quickly without having to do a lot of planning. So if you come one level uh, deeper again in terms of you know, service plans, which is walls, scenes, layouts, that I think is uh, not so simple, uh, as simple as changing the layouts of uh, your building. Right? So that requires a little, little bit of planning in terms of uh, how do you, uh, uh, how is your data architecture? How is your master data? Uh, how is your data flowing? What levels of abstraction can you actually uh, build? What levels of uh, uh, data access do people have? what levels of data uh, do people use in order to make decisions all of that is in that layer of space plan which is slightly more difficult because it requires change management it requires a little bit of um, uh, thinking and planning beforehand right because uh, you need to know where you put in kitchen and where you put in your hall and where you put in your office beforehand and uh, that actually has an impact and it's not so simple to change uh, while living, while it is possible, but it's slightly that much more difficult. So if you don't have your data architecture or your master data uh, uh, really thought through, if you have not thought through your data capture, if you have not really thought through your uh, context of the data that you've captured, very difficult to use those data for analysis. For example, as part of your boardroom or whatever, right? So that's the second layer and that's, uh, also, the layer which um, uh, is still very visible uh, from, uh, from that point of view. Then comes the uh, services uh, layer or the working guts, which is heating, pumping, AC, and all of that. So that's the integration and the workflow layer. It is not very apparent. Uh, uh, as long as it works, nobody uh, uh, is bothered about it. But the moment it breaks, uh, it becomes a major issue, right? You need to fix it uh, right away. Similarly with your integrations and workflows. As long as your integrations and workflows are working really well, uh, nobody is bothered about it. Nobody even looks at it twice. But the moment they break, there is a lot of issues and there is a lot of hue and cry in terms of the users saying that, you know, there is something not right. So that's that layer. And of course, uh, then comes the entire... Uh, uh, skin um, of the building, which is your surround applications, which is whether it is your localization, whether it is your um, uh, HR procurement um, and uh, all the other surround systems that uh, are working. If they don't work, then there is an even bigger problem, right? And then comes the, and but they, they still can be changed. So tomorrow, let's assume that you are running a, a, a success factor system, or if you're running a third party procurement system, and if you want to change, 
uh, that and move to a let's say an Ariba platform or let's say a Concur from a travel management perspective. It is still a lot of change. It still requires a lot of planning. But again, if you can see, it is not disruptive. Uh, it can be done with a little bit of planning and uh, not uh, a lot of disruption. The fundamental layer or the layer below that uh, is the structure layer or is the foundation layer, which is the ERP uh, layer. If you want to change that, it is extremely difficult, if you understand what I mean. So it's not every day that you decide to uh, you know, uh, pull your building down and uh, remove your foundation layer and uh, pull it back up. So it takes, uh, if you see uh, the pace of, or the speed at which you change these applications change is also varied, right? And then last is the site. So you don't necessarily change your uh, 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 IT site uh, every few years either. So it is, um, it is very, very uh, rare and very, very far and few in between. And that is why you'll find that, you know, right now when everyone is talking about, okay, so now bringing it back to S4 and the entire migration to the cloud and value from uh, the migration to S4, right? So you don't necessarily bring this entire uh, conversation uh, unless, unless uh, there is a, either a strategic direction change or the current set of infrastructure doesn't help you. Let's assume you have a two building, two story or a three story individual house uh, or an office, which is a independent building, uh, two story building which was built, let's say, six years back. In the last six years, let's assume that you know, your business has grown, uh, the needs have changed, uh, employ number of employees uh, have changed, or for example, if it is a family home, let's assume that you know, the children have grown up, uh, now they're uh, getting married and they want to still uh, live in the same house. Obviously, uh, the building needs to change as well, right? So you need to adapt in such a way that everyone's needs are taken care of. At some point in time, there comes a time when that structure no longer supports. Let's assume that you, know, you want to, uh, your parents have aged and you have to install a lift in the building or uh, you want to have an elevator in the building or uh, uh, for whatever reasons, the current house is not sufficient. So typically what do we do? Uh, we try to see if we can actually change this as far as possible adapt it to our needs. And when we realize that it is not relevant for our needs anymore, or we cannot change it, or the cost of changing it uh, and the cost of maintenance going forward is so high that you know it doesn't make any sense to continue to um, uh, adapt the building for your continued use. That's exactly the same point in time. In a business, there comes a time when your existing instance of your uh, IT architecture is no longer uh, does not does no the cost of continuing to run your IT architecture in the same way to support your business is no longer tenable for your uh, uh, for you to continue to use the same strategy so that is that is one point when you say okay now let's look at all the options and when you look at all the options you can decide whether you want to buy a bigger plot and again, uh, put, uh, uh, create an individual building that you own and operate, or you decide that you want to buy an apartment in an apartment complex, uh, or rent an apartment in an apartment complex, or rent a bigger um, uh, house or whatever, right? So that's, and once you have that, then you think, okay, now whether or not my existing uh, foundation actually supports my business or not, and then you continue to reevaluate and see what are the different options. Uh, you will find that you know over a period of time, number one, technology has changed. Number two, uh, business processes have changed. New technologies enable you to do uh, things differently. So uh, you don't want to bring the same old way of working into a new paradigm. So which means that you know you need to understand whether or not uh, your teams can actually adapt to the new building. So it's not the same as living in an individual house. Uh, uh, or uh, uh, living in an apartment complex. So they're similar, they're not the same. 
uh, you see that you know each comes with its own set of advantages and disadvantages. So when you move into an apartment complex, uh, then you need to uh, make use of the uh, advantages that you get by virtue of being living in a apartment complex, right? So that's exactly the same thing that you need to do when you are moving from an ECC environment to an S4 environment, which is to find out what all S4 can actually enable for your business and make sure that it is not just a technical upgrade that you know you take your stuff and move um, uh, to, uh, to, an, uh, to a different apartment, but also leverage everything that the new, that the new system brings with it. Right? So that's one, and that's the change, uh, big change. Now, it apparently is not very clear that you know this change brings value unless you've gone through this entire um, exercise in terms of uh, what is it that this new system enables me to do, which I was not able to do earlier. Uh, what is it that, uh, uh, what were the challenges that earlier I was facing which actually now I can address with the new system in place. So that's one level of value proposition that you can think of. Now the second uh, reason why you might want to move could be strategic. Uh, it could be that you know you no longer uh, want to. Let's say, for example, uh, this also happens with a lot of us, right? So uh, the the children have grown up and they have moved out uh, of your homes. They have moved out and settled in different cities, in different countries. Uh, you have a five-bedroom apartment. You don't want to live in a five-bedroom apartment. Uh, but at the same time, you want to uh, you know, um, uh, live uh, in a place which, uh, where there is community and things like that. Right? So there could be a strategic reason why you may decide to either uh, you know, sell your current, uh, sell this owned property and move into a rental property or a, buy an apartment or in a uh, co-working, uh, co-living space and live there for strategic reasons. That could be another reason why you might want to move your from your ECC to S4. In that case, that strategic reason becomes your fundamental value um, uh, uh, for for you. So I can give you an example. I know uh, I know of a lot of customers who realized that uh, uh, you know if you, if they really want to compete with the best in the world, they also need to be able to have processes and technology deployed that uh, the best in the world have in place as well. Uh, and plus, uh, in order to attract and retain talent, and in order to uh, be looked upon as a brand that is at the cutting edge of technology and is a modern, people might want to decide that you know they would go and use modern IT architecture. So that is then that becomes your value proposition. And it doesn't stop there. The key value proposition or the key uh, um, ROI for everyone else, not for the IT department, but for everyone else comes from the fact that you know, uh, the new system then needs to be integrated, then uh, uh, the needs to be extended, then needs to be um, uh, you know, uh, extended in each layer of the building or of the architecture that we spoke about. And each layer when you add, that adds value to that segment of people who interact with that layer. So for example, uh, by integrating it with, uh, let's say, surround solutions, uh, you are able to create uh, a significant amount of value. Uh, by enabling uh, AI, ML uh, functionality, RPA functionality, you create a certain level of value. By ensuring that there are workflows uh, uh, that are uh, done, you create a certain level of value for a certain uh, set of people. And ultimately, uh, by using uh, the um, uh, uh, OLAP reporting that comes along with uh, your S4 implementation by ensuring that uh, um, uh, the, the standard reports that comes along with your S4 gets implemented in terms of fury screens so that uh, uh, the, the final layer uh, or the final two layers in terms of your uh, walls and ceilings and uh, the stuff also is taken care of. So unless you do all of that, uh, it is extremely difficult to show value to those people right? because they don't see the foundation. They don't see uh, what goes into uh, the electrical uh, uh, lining or the plumbing or the 
you know, uh, uh, the ducts for air conditioning and heating. All they want is the jazzy uh, look and feel that uh, they get and the data flow uh, uh, or the information flow that they need in order to be able to do their jobs better. That is the reason why a lot of people say, okay, just by moving to S4, I don't see much value because I'm anyway doing what I'm doing right now. So nothing changes for the end users. So why should I actually go ahead and run or do this migration? Uh, my fundamental belief is you should only do, the, do this transformation from uh, ECC to S4 or for that matter, uh, uh, third-party ERP to an S4 uh, only for these two reasons. Either your current ERP is untenable in terms of you know, the maintenance of the ERP is becoming more difficult uh, more expensive and uh, is not supporting the new business models or the new business initiatives that your business wants to run, then very clear case of moving to uh, a more modern uh, ERP, which is more uh, um, extendable, more uh, modular, more, uh, uh, more intelligent from that point of view. Or it's a strategic choice that you, know, you do that you know uh, you want to actually move into a more modern ERP for strategic reasons. Uh, there is no third reason. Uh, of course, the the reason why a lot of customers actually evaluate this when there is a hardware refresh coming is because that's the time when actually someone is looking where the plot is. Do we want to continue to have our own individual apartment, uh, individual house, or do we want to move into an apartment? Uh, either as a rented place or as an own place. So rented is rented is public cloud, own uh, apartment is kind of private cloud. So so that's that's the comparison that I thought was interesting. So I'll just stop there and maybe open it up. Uh, what do you guys think? Do you think the comparison makes sense? Does it not make sense? Uh, any thoughts, comments, questions? So Mukesh, comparison makes sense. Uh, okay, typically that's where uh, uh, you can uh, associate uh, people with the real life scenario kind of a thing. That's one. Um, but again, majority of the times, uh, what happens is that um, uh, as long as we are talking uh, in uh, non-financial terms, it all it all sinks well. But the real challenge comes in when we convert the KPIs, ROI, and uh, bring it into the dollar value. And that's where probably uh, we all need help. Okay, mm. that's, that's the only point I can say. Uh, probably we can follow it up with uh, an additional session at some point in time, walking through, as I mentioned, probably the value life cycle manager, A, B, probably uh, the new Signavio, which throws a lot of insights and a lot of additional info, et cetera. So probably we can pick up one <clears throat> sample report and detail it out how those values are calculated, et cetera. So that's my view, uh, I'll, okay, but I really appreciate it. Thanks. Anyone else, uh, uh, any thoughts in terms of, you know, what I did I say, what, whatever I said, did it make sense? Um, can you relate to it? I just, this is just uh, uh, over the weekend, I read this book uh, and I felt that the connection was really, at least for me, it was very, how do I put it, um, it seemed very relevant. Uh, and from a costing perspective also, uh, Srini, I think, uh, at least for me, when I think about it, uh, uh, moving from um, um, uh, your own owned and operated uh, uh, building, to uh, uh, either as a tenant uh, in a larger building or as a uh, as an owner in a larger building, part of a larger building, uh, there is a lot of cost involved, and you have to do the entire um, uh, interiors again, and there is a lot of cost involved there as well. So, uh, at least for me, it felt I could relate to it. So maybe uh, I'll just stop there. And uh, any other uh, anyone else? Do you think that example makes sense? Do you think I should work on uh, exploring this um, uh, 
uh, relation a little bit more, uh, maybe, you know, to develop this further? Do you think it makes sense for me to spend time on this? Do you think you can have this conversation uh, with uh, your business? So that's the test. Do you think you can share this uh, relation with your business and uh, hopefully um, uh, come out uh, uh, convincing them that you know these are the two reasons why we move into an S4 environment and in order to actually see for the end users to see value, uh, uh, the actual um, uh, end, uh, as I said, you know, the last uh, frames also need to be addressed in order for them to see value as well, which is uh, your uh, end user reportings and um, uh, yeah, the ability to analyze and make data-driven decisions, which is the fifth layer in terms of or the um, the space plan, if, if I may say so. Forget about what I said. If there is any other question, thought, uh, uh, comments uh, that you want to bring up to this conversation, more than happy to take uh, any questions that you might have. Is there any particular topic or a partner or a, uh, or a startup that you want me to uh, invite for these lunch and learn sessions? Uh, if there is any particular topic from an SAP point of view that you want me to uh, bring experts from, uh, please do let me know. Uh, you have my email ID, you have my WhatsApp um, uh, on these groups that uh, I run at any point in time, please feel free to, um, uh, to kind of uh, drop a note. Uh, I will try and bring in an expert uh, from that point of view. So this this week already, uh, I'm trying to see if I can get a customer to present their digital transformation journey for tomorrow. Uh, I'm looking for a startup for Wednesday. Thursday, we will be uh, uh, hosting Gunter again, and he will be talking about conversational AI and RPA from, an, uh, uh, from that point of view. And on Friday, I'm hoping to get uh, someone, uh, a certified partner again, uh, to talk about uh, what uh, their product uh, does. So do you think uh, these sessions um, help? Uh, if yes, please do share your feedback as well. I'm just kind of running, a, launching a poll. Please do provide your feedback on that session as well, on this session as well. Yeah, Mukesh, uh, your, your uh, insights on the book are really, really valid. That's where uh, even though we talk about industry best practices, even though we talk about peers, et cetera, majority of the times people claim that they are unique and everybody is unique in their own uh, way. In their own way. Uh, so yeah. obviously, obviously it correlates very well with uh, what you uh, shared. So really appreciate that. Uh, second, uh, uh, as you asked the partner and uh, a third party tools that collaborate well with SAP, be it uh, support, be it the activity, etc. Probably you can look at ServiceNow, Jira, some of these tools, okay? Mm -hmm. Because I'm seeing uh, some sessions being organized by American SAP user group next week and all that. So probably if that's the interest, you can look at it uh, because that's gaining a lot of ground and people are looking at it as an opportunity. Sure, we'll do that. Thank you so much for the uh, suggestion, Rene. So if there are no further questions or thoughts or comments, um, I will stay on for a couple of more minutes. Uh, uh, if you would like to drop off, uh, uh, thank you for taking time and attending the session. I'm still uh, around if you want me to, if you, if you have a question or a thought or a comment. Shamal, thanks for joining in. Uh, I don't know how, where, at what point in time you joined. Uh, I was trying to kind of uh, talk about uh, a book that I uh, read about uh, how buildings learn and how that kind of relates to how IT infrastructure or IT architecture needs to learn as well. So I do not know where you joined 
or may, if it made sense for you at all. Okay, thank you so much, guys, uh, 